Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at plotting daily stock returns. Um, in order to do this we need to download daily returns for the company that we've been using for chapter 8 and 9 and we need to bring those daily returns into us, well we need to bring the daily stock prices into a spreadsheet. We need to calculate the returns then we need to create a chart or a table or a plot um, in order to see what happens over time to the share, to the share prices and their returns. So step one is going to be back to return to Yahoo Finance. I was in Yahoo Finance a minute ago for our previous tutorial, getting data, monthly data, for a period of 10 years to see how share price changed over time. Now I just want to look at one month. I'm going to take February 1st to February 28th. I'm going to use February 8th, 2013, and I'm going to get daily data. Click on Get Prices, and here is all of my data. Opening price, the high for the day, the low for the day, the price the market closed at, the number of shares that were traded, and our adjusted closing price, which takes into account um, dividends, and share re um, dividends, share repurchases, and splits. So I'm going to download this data. I have to right click and save it. My computer won't just download it into a CSV format. When I save it I need to keep the CSV file extension and I'm going to call it Ford Daily February. Okay, Then I'm going to open it. Here we go. I want this data but I don't want to be in this particular spreadsheet so I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to close this file. It's going to want to make sure that I want to keep the information I just copied so I'm going to tell it yes, it'll get rid of this file and here I am back in my macro enabled worksheet that I used for the previous tutorial. Now I'm going to take that month or that daily data for the month of February and paste it. There it is. So again, when you bring data in, this is a lot of data, we can't tell what company this is, we can't tell you know, what we're looking at, so you start by inserting a row, right click, insert, a row will pop up on top of the row that you had before, and I'm just going to in this one cell say Ford Motor Company, daily prices and returns February 2013. I'm leaving it in one row because as I figured out with the last tutorial, if I merge it and get it all nicely formatted at this point, when I erase the cells I don't need or the rows, the columns that I don't need, I'll have to do it again. So all I want is my date and my adjusted closing price. I'm going to highlight the cells I don't want or the columns I don't want. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete them. Perfect. Now all I have is date and adjusted closing price for Ford over that amount of time. Now I'm going to merge those cells. Okay. This top row, I kind of like to have it looking a little bit nice. So I'm just going to center those and make them bold in italics, something so that we can have our eye drawn to what we're seeing. So what we're going to do first is sort these so that the first is on the top and the 28th is on the bottom. And to do this, I'm going to highlight all of my rows and now I'm just going to click sort because I want to see if, it, if I can get it to sort it incorrectly so that I can show you how to fix it. Well, it, it sorted correctly. No problem. Alright, daily returns is going to be our next one. So you remember that to calculate our return for a particular day, and you'll see that we go from the first to the fourth, that's because the second and third were probably a weekend. So it's only going to show days. Don't panic if there are weekends missing from your daily data. So the market closes on Friday and it opens again on Monday, that's basically a daily return. So our formula for calculating our returns is what it is on the second day divided by what it is on the first day minus one. And I'm going to give you the formula here so that you can see that while we're working on our spreadsheet. So again, that formula is new value divided by old value minus one. 
instead of entering this for every single month or every single day, I'm just going to right click on that corner and it's going to bring all those values down. If I highlight them all together, I can do a percentage format with two decimal places and now I can see the gains and losses that we've had on a daily basis last month. Those are formulas for a few of the rows. So to put this on a graph, what do I do? To put this on a graph, I need to figure out what I want on my different axes. So I'm not going to plot adjusted closing price at all. I'm just going to plot date and daily returns. Then I'm going to go to chart and I'm going to ask for a line chart and I'm going to do a marked line and it came out just fine. That's what it's supposed to look like. So I've got my dates, they're in there. I've got my percentage returns, they're in there. That looks great. All I need to do is do a little formatting. I'm going to choose to title it Ford Daily Returns for February 2013. I don't need that. And since I've got daily returns and those dates, I'm going to leave it as is. So there we go, plotting daily returns for a company of our choosing over one month in time. We see that some days we gain, some days we lose. Overall, it seems to be more days of gaining than losing, but we can't use that for too much because it turns out that our shares closed low, lower at the end of the month than they started at the beginning of the month. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the returns vary dramatically.